if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Welcome to Nine Cents. Nine Cents is a satanic perspective of our modern world, and I'm your host, Reverend Campbell. It's great to have you. It is July the 5th, and as of today, we have 11,420,448 worldwide cases of COVID-19 with 534,398 deaths. And I got a great show for you this week. That's right, I'm the devil's advocate. I want to talk about satanic independence. Is that a thing? Can it exist? In Infernal Informant, I've got two articles for you. The first one is Frederick Douglass's descendants recite his famous speech at July 4th, about July 4th. And Trump claims journalists slander all veterans by calling out racism in Independence Day Address. And in the final segment, the creature feature, I'm going to be talking about a film that was released last year that I intended to watch, and I just never got around to until this weekend, Robert the Bruce. It's a bit of a sequel to Braveheart. Completely different, but we'll get into that. Um, thanks for joining. I know it's early. It's even early from the early time, right? <laughs> I said it was going to be at noon and I jumped on like 10 minutes early. Uh, William, good to see you, man. This is always a challenging time for me because my idea of patriotism has shifted. Uh, the older I've gotten, um, the more I recognize the genuine injustice that this country has caused both, both, um, at home and overseas, uh, our meddling influence has caused ourselves tremendous damage as a nation, ongoing, and we can't seem to get out of our own way. We tie ourselves to ideals that were, at the time, affirmations of hopefulness about future, not reality as it was. And uh, we reflect upon this particular nation, the United States of America, as if it had ar always had and upheld those ideals. But even when the Constitution came out, the majority of uh, the Union did not want it. They did not like it. They had to create the Federalist Papers to try to convince people that it was a good idea. It took an immense amount of sacrifice uh, an immense amount of compromise and uh, the moving of the capital from New York to DC in order to convince a lot of Southern states. And so it's frustrating to me when you see anyone glorifying our forefathers, but then equally it drives me mad when you run across people who are trying to shit on them as if they never did anything good, as if one aspect of their nature stains their entire being. And that's something that ignores nuance and it ig ignores reality. And that drives me crazy. So whenever the fourth comes around, I want to reflect on the sacrifices that individuals made in order to create this union, in order to mold it and make it a more perfect union, that striving goal of ours, but then you run across Americans and they are some of the most ignorant, objectively stupid humans on this planet. And I can't help but think, fuck, I'm one of them. I'm championing this place and they are actively stupider than the majority of the rest of the world. It drives me crazy. Just crazy. Um, so July 4th, I watched Independence Day. Love that film. Got to watch it every year. Um, and I remind, I reminded myself that it was probably one of the best sci-fi patriotic films ever made. Certainly in the nineties. Like it, it, it holds up. It's great. It is an entertaining, entertaining film. I love it. Absolutely. Um, Jeff Goldblum is amazing. Will Smith, just that film catapulted him up and solidified his sort of um, superhero 
celebrity, you know, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> but it's Marat to be dumb, America. That's right, Zachary. <laughs> How's it going, Missouri? What's up, Zachary? Um, so we watched like uh, um, fireworks going off last night, and like uh, there's a guy on our street. He's a veteran, a Marine veteran, who always throws in thousands of dollars on these really great aerials, like professional firework displays. Um, and he had like this metal trailer set up in the middle of the road and all of the fireworks on it. And they were just sort of going off, creating this really beautiful spectacle. Um, and then it caught fire. <laughs> and there was like two to three feet of fire coming up, igniting other fireworks that were not yet ready to go off and just sending them in the sky. And he just let it burn for a long time. And there was tons of people around. I just, I could not believe that he didn't put it out. I was like, you know, three street or three houses down. So I didn't even want to be out there because mosquitoes, but you know, you gotta, you gotta pretend on holidays <laughs> if you're not into it, at least for the sake of kids. Right. Um, Starship Troopers. That's a good one. That's a really good one. I like that. I don't think it holds up as well, but it's still entertaining for sure. Um, okay. So the fourth was fine. I mean, we watched uh, Hamilton, which I had never seen before, and it was the Disney Plus version, so I think there's slight alterations to the actual stage play uh, musical. It was great. It was it was wonderful. I was afraid that they were going to be a little too heroic with Hamilton himself because he's the point of the play, but they actually did a pretty fair job about who he actually was as an individual through the format of you know this musical play. So I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, all of the actors all together did a really wonderful job. The music is phenomenal. And it gives you these little vignettes of history, um, not only leading up to the Revolutionary War and through it, but also afterward. And uh, very entertaining. Very good stuff. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it. Hamilton is great. For those of you, uh, how's it going, see, see Tanny Chris? Thanks for checking in. You're all good. <laughs> Kate, how you doing, hon? Um, the uh, you guys have been getting a massive amount of video dumps from me, right? From my reading aloud channel. Uh, I don't mean to inundate you with that performance based reading project, but I do need to transfer it all. And so I'm only doing nine videos a day, I've got a year's worth, so you know, like 300 or so videos to upload. I've already gotten over a hundred, so. I've got some more to go. So just, if you can just be patient, it'll be over with soon enough. And then you'll only see this Tanic content that's regularly released. But I do want to, you know, solidify all of my content into one channel. So unfortunately, you're going to have to deal with that for a little bit. I hope you're okay with it. Um, you should still be able to see the regular shows like Nine Cents, Sadness on Cinema, and every once in a while, a Speak of the Devil. Uh that's kind of all I had at the beginning. Should we, the second act of Hamilton, you can also see the stirrings of the Civil War. Yeah. They, well, I mean, just the formation of the Union was the preface of the Civil War because Southern states literally were, were financial successes, economic powerhouses because of slavery. If they didn't have that, they would have been just as vulnerable as the Northern states. And so, of course, they didn't want to have all men are created equal in a constitution when they're actively enslaving men, you know? Uh, so like it's inevitable, you know, 70 some odd years later that it would end up in a civil war, but yeah, you definitely saw the rumblings early on and, and understandably. So, um, I'm going to get into a little bit of that here shortly, but I, I just thought it was a really fascinating show. Gene, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Surgery. Thanks for joining me. All right. All right. Let's do a little devil's advocate. Let's dive in. All right, 
let me throw up an image here. Just for fun. It doesn't really say anything specifically. Um, so I was brainstorming this, this concept of what it means to be an individual, right? Um, to have a sense of independence. It's, yesterday was Independence Day in the United States. Um, the idea that we broke off from the Union so that we could have our own independent nation, unbeholden to anyone, except maybe France, but then we, we almost reneged on that. Um, and I kind of came to the conclusion in my own mind that there's no such thing as independence in any form, period. It's, it's one of those hopeful terms that mankind can strive for, but never actually has, right? Like the notion of equality. It's, it will never be a reality. We can treat each other equally, but we're not equal in many different ways, but it's just a reality, right? So the idea of independence to me, the idea of satanic independence to me is, it's a dream. It's, it's, a, it's a, a breeze that just wafts by you quickly. So let me sort of unpack this idea. Um, and so stripping away the idea of Satanism for a second, right? And just focusing on the idea of just independence. As children, our ideas of independence are leaving our home, our family, our parents, right? And then you, you're 18 or whatever age you, you strike out on your own and you are now independent from your parents. But then you still probably either have to deal with work or college or the military. So wherever you go from independence from your parents means you are now emboldened or uh, 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 you now rely on someone else in order to be independent from your parents, right? Whether your job or the government or, or uh, college, in, in which case you're, you're beholden to your um, loans, to your, the people investing, the companies investing in your future. Uh, who pro not provided you that financial aid. And so if we're never actually independent, we just take little steps of independence from other people, the context of independence takes a completely different idea, right? The only real way that you could ever truly be independent up un you know, unto yourself is if you just lived in the woods and subsistence lived off of nature. But people don't normally do that. I, and, and arguably, no one actually does that. They're still beholden on whatever little society they can get to help um, ease that level of, of independence. And so if there's no actual independence in the world, right, and we're always going to be beholden to someone or some entity in order to have this semblance of independence, well, what does that mean in the context of Satanism? Because ultimately, we see ourselves as these rabid individualists, right? Our idea of independence is wrapped up in our, our very ego. We, we enjoy the, the metaphorical Satan uh, as a sort of um, inspiration, that sort of rebel drive to, to go our own way, to s realize successes on our own terms. But we still have to use lesser magic to get it which means we're still beholden to others enacting our will. So is the idea of satanic independence any different than traditional independence, right? I mean, most people are glad to have a government that supports them or a family that supports them, uh, and they're fine being part of what we would refer to as the herd, right? There's a bit of comfort in that. We try to act as if we're outside of this herd that we condemn so much. And yet all we're doing is sort of kicking it on the outlier sections of it. We're circumnavigating some of it, some of the time, as best as we possibly can, if we actually want to. But we still have to operate within it if we want to see any semblance of a total environment, for example. Where are we going to get the resources? Who's going to be supporting us with power, with water? I mean, it's, it's fine to pay that lip service to the idea that, oh yeah, we're, we're, uh, 
we're our own gods and, and we are true individualists and uh, we're better than everyone else. But if it's in, only in your head that that's ever realized, then you're not actually any better than anyone else. You're still susceptible to literally the exact same things as the rest of the society that you live in, in which you are beholden to in order to survive. So the idea of independence, we can only take tiny little pieces for ourselves, right? So for example, financial independence. Well, don't have any debt, right? That's something to strive for. Um, right now, I only have my home as in my car as debt. And those are going to be knocked out here in, you know, a, a couple years. Um, outside of that, you know, you're going to end up picking up loans in order to remodel or, or buy new things for your, uh, you know, family, but, but ultimately you're still going to, uh, fight for that financial independence. Hopefully there's some people who don't even care and they're fine being completely dependent on a bank or on an institution. What about social independence? Is that possible? I mean, as a Satanist, it's absurd to me to think that one could in one hand identify as a complete misanthrope and yet still engage in the society that they supposedly detest and avoid. How is that possible? So you're never actually alone. If you're in America, you're benefiting from the government, local, state, and federal government that is supporting that social environment you exist in. So you're not independent from it. You're benefiting from it, or in some cases, being harmed by it. Intellectually independent. What does that mean? Is that even possible? Because I do believe that there's a, if, if you engage in traditional media and social media, there is a collective consciousness that you're tapping into that does not allow you to have your own free thoughts. You literally are riding, riding the wave of whatever is hot right now. So whether it's a trending topic in Twitter or a Facebook uh, action of everyone black out your, your profile photos in support of uh, BLM. If you engage in that, that's not a free independent thought of yours. You're riding a, a wave that's happening in that moment. There's no independent of, of thought in that. You're a slave to popular culture. Is it possible to be safe? The idea of safety you don't have to worry about wildlife in most cases and where the majority of people live, um, suburban and urban environments. Even rural environments are relatively safe compared to our ancient ancestors. But that's provided for by the greater society, right? Your idea of safety. If someone's breaking into your house and you're unable to protect yourself or you don't want to engage them directly, you call the police. They're there to support you. If your house gets on fire, you call the fire department. They're there to support you. You wouldn't be able to do most of those things on your own. So there is no real independence when it comes to your personal safety either. Yeah, you can buy a firearm or, or a bow and arrow or whatever personal protection devices you want to have. <laughs> Put your knife. But that's just in order to fight off the possible chance of death in a moment. That's not real safety. That's just survival in a moment. Safety is not having to worry about that happening. So that doesn't exist either. Health. What does it mean to be independently healthy, right? You eat right. You exercise, hopefully. You're trying to take care of this one body that is going to allow you to live as long as possible because there's nothing else that we know about. So if this is the only game we got, let's play it well. But genetics, the fuck you every time. Environment. <laughs> that was a weird emphasis. Environment. <laughs> your environment, you're completely susceptible to. If you lived in Flint, Michigan, you were being poisoned by lead in your water and you had no idea. For years, that's happening environmentally. That's why environmental regulations are so goddamn important and why corporations hate them so much because it prevents them from poisoning our atmosphere and our environment. It costs money to prevent them to do that. So you're not really independent 
on your health because you're completely susceptible to the environment, the government, the society, and your own system. There is no independence. It's all a fucking mirrors. It's all reflections of what we want, but doesn't actually exist. So is there any real autonomy in a society for an individual? I mean, there's that romantic ideal. But outside of that, no. No, not at all. We are ants in a maze. And the only reason why we have the ability, that freedom of thought, to have this idea of ego and independence is because of the society that's built around us supporting that as an option. There are countries right now where you are killed if you exert too much freedom, personal freedom. Or you share too much independent thought. So, we, we like to bloviate this idea about what it means to be a Satanist. About what Satanism is. But it's entirely dependent on the society that allowed it to exist. And you are entirely dependent on the government that supports you. Most everything in life is a complete illusion. We like to see it. We like to conjure the imaginary images because it makes us feel good and warm. Kind of like the herd. So how different are we? What separates us? How can we be any more independent than anyone else's Satanists or any individual amongst the rest of the herd? And if we can't, Are we okay with delusion? Um, all right, let's see what you guys have to say here. How's it going, George from Argentina? Good to see you, man. Conversation reminds you of a Buddhist idea that nothing has any inherent meaning because of the complexities, uh, complex interconnectedness of the entire universe. I mean, it's, it's not an insane thought to me, especially, I like to do these like, little thought experiments from time to time. Um, where I re-examine notions that I believe I have a firm grasp of, like the idea of independence, and really dig down on, on the, the truth behind it. Because I don't, I don't mind accepting an idea if it makes me feel good. You know, I'll have a glass of whiskey, or I'll have a candy bar, or, you know, something that just immediately floods dopamine into your system, and you just feel good because you indulged in that one thing that you were craving for whatever reason. The rush of sugar and fats. Um, it feels good. So I don't mind doing things simply to feel good. But to base your entire personal philosophy on them when they're not real. It's like playing Jenga and yet there's nothing underneath it all. You're just building more blocks on, on top of each other and there's no base for them to even rest on. It's all just made up. Um, there's independence of action, choice, will. Is there? Independence of survival is nearly impossible, yeah. Um, I don't know that there's independence of action, choice, and will. I mean, going back to neurological studies and how your brain makes choices before you actively make the choice. Um, is there? I don't know. Um, it's some matrix shit. <laughs> I, I, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, humans need humans to exist. You didn't create yourself. Your parents did. However, the idea of independence has been shown to be beneficial as a behavioral trait to humankind. Striving to be independent of others in order to lessen the impact, the, any potential negative impacts that one may have on a larger scale, I totally understand um, and I agree with. But again, you're, it's, it's all degrees. You're, you're, you've never actually ripped the umbilical cord away you're just standing back as far as possible in that particular case right because you're not actually independent um championing individual responsibility helps everyone yeah absolutely i i, I completely agree um but again because everyone doesn't 
It's like if if everyone else is cheating, but you're deciding to play the game fair, you're still going to fucking lose. Yeah, you want to play fair, but everyone else is cheating. So why the fuck? Who are you hurting? You're hurting yourself. Personal responsibility, individual responsibility, I think is an ideal that every individual should strive for, but don't. They don't. And so the reality is, is we're holding ourselves to a higher standard, which feels good. But it doesn't actually benefit us at all. <laughs> like at all. If you really believed in individual responsibility, you wouldn't take any bonuses that the government puts out um, in order to support you, right? Because you should be able to take care of yourself. Why, why should I rely on a government to, to help subsidize this pandemic and, and the environment? or this economy, I should be able to do it myself. I'm not going to go see a doctor because I'm the one who drove the car into the ditch. So uh, I'm just going to mend my own wounds. Now, we even have levels of that. Individual responsibility, as long as it works in our favor. Otherwise, eh, shh, shh, down low. Don't talk too loud about it. If it's all a fucking game, if it's all bullshit... We're only choosing pieces, bits and pieces of it that actually make us feel better. So yeah, we're, we're acting like, yeah, this is a grand play, but the emperor has no fucking clothes the entire time. So, you know, the Satanism champions this idea that there are no mar martyrs in Satanism, right? So you tuck your bathroom when you need to. Um, Self-preservation. I think that is very, very important. Um... Because that meters the idea of not just individual responsibility, meaning for self-preservation, I'm going to go against my ideals when it's convenient. If it means I'm not going to get my head chopped off or thrown off a building, yeah, I'm going to fucking lie. Hell yes. I'm going to have my own personal moral code that I'm going to move through life with. But if entering a situation where it is detrimental to my life, I'm changing my personal moral code for survival. Um, so it's all made up. It's all manufactured. It's all degrees. Same with independence. So anytime you run across anyone who is saying, no, I'm, I'm free. I'm not beholden to anyone. They're either stupid or they're lying to themselves. And hopefully we, at least as Satanists can question the realities that we accept enough to know. We're not as we're not as independently powerful as we claim to be. And by claiming in the face uh, of just reality, we're presenting, we're showing how stupid we can truly be as individuals. Let's just accept what and who we are work within those confines and don't claim to be greater or different than you actually are. Be the best version of you you can be. But don't lie to yourself because everyone else sees it. I don't know. I just wanted to play with that idea a little bit. I didn't really have any essay in mind or uh, anything like that. So let's go ahead and dive into the Infernal Informant. This first article is from CNN. Frederick Douglass's descendants recite his famous speech about July 4th. Douglass, an abolitionist who fought for social reform in the 1800s, delivered a speech on July 5th, 1852, at an Independence Day celebration, pointing out the hypo hypocrisy in the holiday and in the Founding Fathers' ideals. On Saturday, five of Douglass's descendants, Douglass Washington, Morris II, 20, Isidore Dharma Douglas Skinner, 15, Zoe Douglas Skinner, 12, Alexa Ann Watson, 19, and Haley Rose Watson, 17, recited the speech in a short film for NPR. 
Quote, the U.S. celebrates the Independence Day amid nationwide protests and calls for systemic reforms, NPR stated in the description of the film. In this short film, five young descendants of Frederick Douglass read and respond to excerpts of his famous speech, What to the Slave is the Fourth of July, which asks all of us to consider America's long history of denying equal rights to black Americans. In his speech, Douglass says, the rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not me. The sunlight that brought life and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice. I must mourn. What to the Amer uh, American slave is the 4th of July? I answer. A day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham, your boasted liberty an unholy license, your national greatness swelling vanity. Your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless, your denunciation of tyrants, brass-fronted imp impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings, with all your religious parade and solemnity, are, to him, mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy. After reciting, his descendants responded to what they'd read. This speech was written almost 170 years ago, but this part of it is still extremely relevant, especially with today's protests, said Douglas Washington Morris II. While the 4th of July probably does not feel the same to me as it does to others, I wouldn't say that it has no meaning because it's the time when American, America as a country became free from another country, said Alexa Ann Watson. But I wouldn't say it's not the time in which I gained my freedom. Isidore Dharma Douglas Skinner closes out the video with an optimistic note, saying, I think in many ways we are still slaves to the notion that it will never get better. But I think that there is hope, and I think that it's important that we celebrate black joy and black life. And we remember that change is possible. Change is probable and that there's hope. Um, I love the idea of comparing and contrasting the state of the union during its formation to how it is now, because it's not that much different. Sure, we don't have plantations of slaves, but slavery is still alive and well, literal and figurative. Um, the truth is, you know, like I said, the, the opening of, of this episode, we lie to ourselves. The hope of a nation, we act like was. We're the shining light on a hill, as, as Reagan used to like to call us uh, as America. But the truth is, is we've always been bigoted and filled with hate and acting in our own self-interest. And I would ask, is that wrong? To be bigoted. Everyone's got their biases. I believe in individual relations, right? So I, I probably do have some severe biases towards individual people, not broad, you know, broad swaths of people like um, racists, but certainly individuals I dislike because of their actions, their thoughts. Um, the idea that, um, well, the idea that, that everyone's created equal, that, that the pursuit of happiness is what everyone has the right to, but we've never granted that right. Yeah, we all have the opportunity to pursue happiness. Some cases are going to be infinitely more challenging than others. But there's never been the right to pursuit of happiness. It's like, it's like the idea of equality. It's never actually been there. We can act like it. We don't. But we could try. And our justice system was set up with that in mind. But it doesn't actually work that way. So again, lies. We live in this fabricated universe. We reflect on what America was with these golden glasses 
And the truth is the golden years were not golden for nearly anyone. It was suffering and pain and sacrifice and death. And it's because of that, we're in such a good place right now. And, and it drives me crazy when, when people are freaking out about how terrible it is right now, when you have to only to look back 30 years and it was worse. Go back 30 more and it was much worse. And on and on. It's not as bad as we pretend it to be. And yes, there are injustices happening, but guess what? That's fucking reality. That's life. You can't get around that. And we can continue to strive to be a more perfect union. And I encourage that as a goal. But we can't be surprised when we see injustice all around us because that is human nature. That is how it's always been in every culture throughout all of history. To expect us to be able to be different just because we have an idea of being different is foolish. It's, it's fairy tales. It's childish dreams. We have to work at that. Um, and so I like that we are still fighting against this idea in media and in protests, as long as they're peaceful. Um, that no, history was not as wonderful as it's being painted. They're literally whitewashing what was horrific for most citizens in this country. Um, so good on them. I like that. And the balls of Frederick Douglass to be given an opportunity to speak to an Independence Day crowd and to pull that out? Woo! I mean, the cojones on this guy. You got to respect that. You have to respect that. They, that was not a willing audience for that. He started that whole speech just talking about how uh, wonderful this idea of America was and how, uh, how, how uh, valuable the sacrifices were to that end. Um, but then he just turns it around and says like, yeah, you, you cheer. You enjoy it. That's not what I'm getting. And I'm not getting it because of you. Ah, dude, the balls. I love that so much. Um, you're right. That is a period idea. Absolutely. All right, let's do this next one here. I'm sweating, man. It is so hot outside right now. Ooh, and in my house. All right, our favorite chimp. Trump claims journalists slander all veterans by calling out racism in Independence Day address. I'm kind of back and forth on this one, so bear with me. This is from the Daily Beast. Freshly off an astonishingly incendiary speech at Mountain Rushmore on Friday night, President Trump picked up where he left off on Saturday and took aim at the media, bizarrely claiming that journalists who call out racism somehow slander the entire country and all U.S. military veterans. Quote, To those in the media who falsely and consistently label their opponents as racists, who condemn patriotic citizens, when you level these false charges, you not only slander me, you not only slander the American people, but you slander generations of heroes who gave their lives for America, he told the crowd gathered at the White House's Salute to America celebration. Um, is it possible to be a patriot and racist? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is it possible to be anything and something else? Yeah, that's the complexity of man. That's a normal thing. I hate it when people say, well, they're patriots. How could they possibly be racist? The fucking founding fathers were majority racists, slave owners. So yeah, you can be a racist and a patriot at the same time. This false equivalency argument is just bullshit. It, it, it shows his ignorance to the people in the crowd and they're eating it up. They're just like, yeah, how could you be a patriot? A, a patriot <laughs> and a racist. <laughs> Come on. Are there no independent thing? <laughs> Independence, there you go, never mind. <laughs> no, there's no independent thinking. Um, not in the crowd. While he did not name names on Saturday, Trump repeatedly claimed protesters were seeking to erase the legacy of great heroes. This is where I kind of agree with him. Because we are more than one thing, I'm a Satanist, I'm an art director, I'm a graphic designer, I'm a father, I'm a veteran, you know, I'm a lot of things. Um, if you don't like one of those, 
then what? Does that one thing sum up everything about me and now you can just cancel me because you don't like that one thing? No, that's not reality. But that's what's happening. That's what is happening when you tear down George Washington's statue. George Washington. We would not have a union if it weren't for George Washington. Yeah, he owned slaves. He was a tobacco farmer. There's a lot of people in the South who owned slaves who were still heroes to the Republic and helped form the Republic. You don't have to like that part of who he is, but you gotta respect the man for what he did because you're fucking benefiting from it. So trying to cancel him out because that one thing you don't appreciate, yeah, it's detestable now. And for some people it was then, but not everyone. And we can't reflect on history with our current glasses and expect it to live up to our current ideals. That's not reality. Um, by leveling the false accusation of racism, he says, you slander people much braver and principled than you. You're slandering the young... Yeah, that's funny. This guy cannot talk about bravery. Mr. Bone Spurs three deferments from Vietnam because he's a fucking scared-ass little baby. Um, how dare he even talk about patriotism? He who never earned anything on his own, he was given everything and squandered it. The only thing he's good at is branding, which he's very good at. And he's convinced a lot of people with it that he's something of significance. But anyone with any fucking semblance of a brain can see that it's all smoke and mirrors. Just pull back the curtain and the Wizard of Oz is standing there this diminutive little raisin of a being. Um, he did not elaborate on which accusation in particular was false, who it was made against, or if he was flat out dismissing the existence of racism in general. Quote, we will not let the legacy of these heroes be tarnished by you, the patriots who built our country. We're not villains, he said. I agree with him. We, we have to... I, we can't tarnish their legacy because it is. Their legacy exists. They were slave owners and they fought a revolution against their homeland to create a new union. They're both things. They're all of it. That is their legacy. So we're not tarnishing it by pointing out the fact that they were slave owners. And I don't like the idea that, that we're painting them as bad guys. And it's not everyone doing it. But there are groups across this country that are actively breaking the law and defacing public property by doing that very thing. Tearing down monuments. Um, statues. Uh, he also gave details on his newly announced Garden of Monuments, enumerating figures whose statues would be erected there. He said George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, both of whom owned slaves, had been unfairly mistreated in recent reframing of their legacies. See, that, that's where I disagree, is that no one's reframing anything. They're just pointing out the reality of it. But you can be in both camps in your mind. You can say that was bad and still say that they were doing things that were good, even though they did things that were bad. We, we have to stop, man. <laughs> Zachary. We have to stop trying to encapsulate every individual based on one aspect of who they were or are. Take them as the entirety, the complexity, because that's really the majesty of an individual, right? And if we're going to try to argue that people should do that for us as Satanists, well, then we should definitely try to at least present a basic level of human respect to others and let them tell us whether or not they're going to earn it or lose it. It's just basic respect. It's something you should have learned as a kid. All right. That's all I have for the Infernal Informant. Let's dive into the creature feature. Throw this up here. OK. 
because in this creature feature, we are talking about Robert the Bruce. And yes, Jeff, you stumbled across it. I'm glad you got out of church early. <laughs> it's Sundays, man. It's just, fuck. It's crazy because you're like trying to sleep in late, but then you don't really want to do anything. But then when you have things to do, you got to get up and you just don't want to, you know, it's, I don't expect anyone to ever tune into these live on Sundays because Sunday is just a rough day for almost everyone. Um, Robert the Bruce. Uh, I, 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 I joined a, a Scottish American society when I was uh, younger. Clan Campbell Society of North America. And it, it basically is just a historical group that champions the history of Scotland and the Clan Campbell uh, family. Not really a family, it's just a clan. Um, but Scottish ancestry. And so uh, about that time, Braveheart came out and I went nuts <laughs> because everyone did back in that time because it was fantastic. Uh, and then um, I was introduced to Robert the Bruce. I didn't really know anything about him before that. And it was historically inaccurate for the most part, because again, it's a film that's meant to be inspirational and, you know, a sort of tall tale. And one thing that you realize about history um, is that not only is it written by the victors, and so it's not entirely accurate, a lot of it's romanticized. We do it to our own founding fathers. Um, and so when you're retelling a story, it's normal to embellish and alter it in order to fit the narrative that you're trying to thread with that story, right? And so I don't really mind when you run across a film that differs from a book or a movie that differs from a comic or something like that, because as long as the thread is there that connects things, then uh, have fun with it. Make it entertaining. That's why we're, we're paying money to watch it, right? But Robert the Bruce was a literal hero. Right? And, and, and what we have to understand is that not only did he sell out his countrymen uh, when he, he went in a campaign with William Wallace for independence of Scotland, but then he turned uh, toward King Edward I's side at the end and allowed Wallace to be captured. And then, when he realized he made a mistake, he went back to try to free Scotland, lost an incredible amount of battles, completely devastated him. He lost all of his hope, all of his dream of a free, independent Scotland. This was like in the 13th century. And literally disbanded his army and went into hiding. There was a bounty out on his head. People were hunting him down. And there's this great little fable tale of him either in a cave or in a cottage, watching a spider trying to build this cobweb, failing a couple times and finally connecting together. And that inspired him to rejoin the fight. Yes, he failed to liberate Scotland from England over and over again. But like that spider building that web, that spider kept trying. So he's going to keep trying too. And ultimately, he did it. He fucking beat Edward II and he created an independent Scotland. It didn't last for very long, but it lasted until his death. And that's a big deal. And it was a constant fight. But the idea of independence should be this thread throughout this entire show. Because whether or not it's recreating um, or, or uh, uh, reimagining the reality of what independence meant to this nation or to the individuals herein, the idea of independence as an individual or as a nation is something that is a natural reaction to oppression, right? We want to be free because we want to have dominion over our own lives. That's part of what makes Satanism so attractive to almost every single one of us, is that we are responsible for our own actions. We make choices. Sometimes we have to give and take a little bit. We have to compromise with ourselves or with other people. But ultimately... We understand that we are going to do everything that's within our power to have dominion over our own lives as much as possible, even if we don't get total. And that's what Robert the Bruce was doing. And I just, this film was, okay, so this is a 2019 American historical fiction war film directed by Richard Gray. It stars Angus McFadden as Robert the Bruce. He played Robert the Bruce in Braveheart. Um, Jared Harris as John Coleman. Uh, Anna Hutchinson as Morag and Zach McGowan as Brandon. 
uh, basically the premise is a little altered from history, but not much, right? So uh, Robert the Bruce uh, is in contest with John Cornyn um, with who should be the rightful king. He murders John in uh, a Presbyterian or in a church. The church disowns him and puts out a bounty on his head. He's fighting uh, against the English this entire time, losing everything. This is the film version of it. And so he disbands his group. Part of his uh, fragment of an army ends up hunting him for the $50 gold bounty um, from the English. And then he goes in hiding. He almost gets killed. And so he's hiding in a cave, has that spider web scene, and then uh, tries to leave the cave, realizing that he made a mistake in disbanding his army because he should always fight for independence because it's the only thing that we as individuals have uh, when oppressed. And so uh, he lays down face first in the snow and he's discovered by this family who their clan is loyal to England, but they're patriots. And Robert the Bruce is the true Scottish king. He was crowned king, uh, even if the English still want him dead. And so uh, they ended up bringing him back to health and there's some inner turmoil within the clan and this family, but ultimately they uh, fight him out. This is a spoiler, people, but it was last year that it was released. Um, he fought his way uh, out of uh, the, the the clan strife, ultimately, and found his way back to his army, which was waiting, hoping that he was going to rejoin them. And then he leads them to victory. So the entire film is a character piece. It's not grand scale like um, Braveheart was. It's not huge battles and stuff. This is an intimate portrait of Robert the Bruce at his most desperate and dispirited. And you get to see this man who, like, like he was actually named Braveheart. They literally preserved his heart and organs and put them in different churches and different locations all around uh, the UK. And they took his heart into battle and then returned it. Like this man was a literal fucking hero to Scotland and used as a sort of shining founding father, like we, uh, you know, preserve our founding fathers in memory until now. Um, but to see him in his most dire, most desperate, most dispirited moments, and how he works out of that, and how his countrymen support him because of the ideal, the, just the imaginary concept of what an independent Scotland could mean. They're literally facing death and they've lost all of their fathers and brothers and they're still fighting. It is such a crazy inspirational film. Again, very small scale, beautiful cinematography, vast sweeping visual scenes. I mean, it's a feast for the eyes. The acting is pretty good. Um, I've seen better, but it's, it's enjoyable if you like those sort of intimate personal discovery type um, films. So if you enjoyed Braveheart and you like Scottish history and you want to see something that's a little more in line with who Robert the Bruce actually was and the struggles that he went through, I definitely suggest you check out this character piece. It is well worth it. It's like eight bucks to buy digitally or you can rent it for like three. Definitely check it out. Robert the Bruce, great film. And that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you guys so much for tuning in early on a Sunday. Now you can go shine your shoes, iron your shirts, and get your asses to church because you need Jesus. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love when people say you need Jesus. Sorry, I had to, I had to throw it out there. Um, all right, what do you guys think? You think most people are interested in ideas of independence or liberty than the actual application? Yeah, because it it's you have to suffer for it, right? I mean, like we know this. You have to sacrifice in order to have any semblance of independence. And let's be honest, most people aren't willing to do that. It's just the reality. Um, they'd rather live off the backs of others. All right. So that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you want to learn more about Satanism or the Church of Satan, check out churchofsatan.com. Read the Satanic Bible. Read the Satanic Scriptures. I got a book club coming up here shortly. Oh, I'm early. Am I early? No, I got an hour. 55 minutes. That's close enough. Um, if you appreciate what I'm doing and you want to support the show, subscribe to the YouTube channel, sign up to the email list. And if you're getting this via a podcast, give me a rating or review. I really appreciate it. And uh, until next week, everyone, hail Satan. <laughs>
You don't need Jesus. Fuck that guy.